What is the scariest story you know that is 100% true? Part 6. Please relax and enjoy. Also, if you like, you could subscribe our channel Thread Tonic. Account 1. Back in the days of film cameras, she had set up a motion control still camera in a cave, hoping to catch a pic of the elusive jaguar in that area. When she finally developed the role, she got one photo of a startled armadillo, 22 more photos of said armadillo really enjoying the motion-controlled flash, and the last photo was of nothing but a jaguar's glowing eyes. Because the snap-happy armadillo had killed the flash batteries with all his selfies. Account 2. Last week I would have said the Japanese war crimes or the rape of Nan King, but frankly for me it's the fact that absolutely nothing is going to come of the Jeffrey Epstein arrest and connections that some of the most influential people on Earth are totally and visibly able to manipulate the system to cover the fact that they're rapists, pedophiles, and murderers. Account 3. Personally, when I was detained by the Nicaraguan military while filming a documentary abroad, I seriously thought we were done for because they had our team separated and we mixed our stories up. My legs were sharking. The main officer guy was a full-fledged Bond villain, too. He had a jet black mustache, sunglasses, and a golden canine tooth. He spoke broken English. So when he told us he could go, it sounded sarcastic and that we were going to be mowed down in the ditch as we left in our bus. It was an insane story. Account 4. My long-term partner decided to end his life suddenly and unexpectedly a few years ago. He was the happiest person I knew, and even with 20-20 hindsight, videos, pouring through old messages, etc., I wouldn't be able to identify any warning signs. Account 5. My mom didn't tell me this story for the longest time, I think, just so she wouldn't unnecessarily worry me when I was younger. But my parents split up when I was about four years old, and my mom and my sisters stayed in a small townhouse for a few years before moving in with my stepdad. Anyway, while we were at the townhouse for I think less than a year, my mom heard something in her room in the middle of the night, and when she woke up to go look, there was a man in her room. She audibly gasped and got out of bed either to fight or run to our room. She couldn't really decide because she was pumped full of adrenaline. The guy ended up running out of our back door, and when the police came, they found signs of forced entry. She never told any of us the full story because we were still sound asleep the entire time, but she ended up explaining more of it the older we got. Edit. Sorry for not explaining more. A lot of people have asked me to finish the story, so here goes. We never found out who it was. The police weren't able to either. Their best guess was that he broke in to rob the place. God forbid he wanted to do anything else, and was just as surprised to see my mom as she was to see him. They think that he thought the place was empty, and it would be an easy mark and bailed when he came face to face with the owner. Account 6. From when I was delivering pizza, I walked up to a trailer park house and knocked. Dude answers the door wearing a swastika armband, and he's bald. I tell him the total, and he invites me inside while he gets the money. There's ten more dudes, all bald, all wearing armbands. Sitting in a circle in metal chairs, guy gives me the money. I go to leave. He grabs my arm and gets in my face and asks, Do you like NRs? I don't want to be murdered. So I respond, Nope, not at all hate those fuckers. And leave as quick as possible. The scary part is every other delivery driver. But me that night was black, and they might have never been seen again if I didn't take the delivery. Account 7. A woman named Joyce Vincent died alone in her bedsit apartment in London and wasn't found for two years. She was only discovered because bailiffs came to evict her from the property and instead found her decomposed body in half, skeleton form. The TV had been on and the windows had been open for two years. Despite the smell and the noise emanating from the apartment, no one had come sooner and found her. Because of the state her body was found in, they could only identify her through matching her teeth to a photograph of her smiling. Because there was basically no body left to study, no one knows how she passed. Her friends guess it was anything from murder to an asthma attack, but no one can ever know. It's not the most scary story in terms of its gruesomeness, some tales in this thread have made me nauseous, but to think someone can die alone and not be found by their family or friends for so long, 
especially in such a densely populated city, fucking terrifies me. Account 8. A bunch of girls in my friend group decided to have a night out and ended up at the local gay club. I can't remember why I didn't go, but I'm sort of glad I wasn't there. However, I also wish I had been, so I could have helped. Anyway, they noticed a girl on the dance floor who looked super out of place. She had sweatpants and a t-shirt on and wasn't wearing makeup and had her hair in a ponytail. She also had a backpack on. Basically, the exact opposite of typical club attire and not at all what someone would usually wear to this place. They said that she seemed very dazed as well. And more importantly, there was a very large man grabbing her and grinding on her and she was just kind of standing there letting it happen. One of my friends tried approaching her to ask if she was all right, but the guy spoke for her and insisted that he was her boyfriend and that she'd just had too much to drink, but that she was okay. Everyone was suspicious, but at that point, there wasn't much else they could do, so they just kept an eye on the two of them. Eventually, the guy left the dance floor to go to the bar, and my friend was able to talk to this girl again. She said that she was extremely out of it and that it seemed more likely that she had been drugged rather than just drunk. The girl managed to convey that she didn't know the man she was with and wanted to leave, so my friend grabbed her and made for the exit, but not before this guy came back. He immediately flipped out, got right in my friend's face, and started screaming at her. It escalated to the point that he eventually swung at my friend who just barely dodged the punch. Thankfully, someone else had went and found a security guard, and they were able to prevent this guy from hurting anyone, meaning that my friends and the girl were all able to leave safely. She was still super messed up when they left, so nobody could get the full story out of her, but she did say that the guy had been following her around town all day. The really scary part is that the bar staff couldn't technically do anything other than throw this guy out after my friends had left. One of them called the cops and gave them a description of the guy, but they said they couldn't really do much other than be on the lookout for him, so chances are that he's still out there somewhere and may do this again. Account 9. I moved into another town. I was surprised by people who looked as they knew me, even though I saw them for the very first time. And everyone around was so rude, despite of all other sources telling how friendly people there were, I was also greeted by, oh no, you again. In one place where I went for the first time, I was looking for a room for rent. And one of the owners told me that he won't rent it to me because my co-tenant saw me following and stalking them. I was like, what the fuck? Am I doing things and forgetting? Is something wrong with my mental health? Then I went abroad for three months. No such thing was happening there. Everything was normal, I thought. Guess it's just a local culture. They do that to get rid of newcomers. Once I returned, I went to a fast. Food to leave my CV, the guy said. You were here a month ago and it hasn't changed. We aren't recruiting, right? I was on another continent. I couldn't have just bought two airplane tickets, spent several days, and just forgetting about it. And my bank account wouldn't forget anyway. That's when I started to understand what's going on. And then one day... I finally saw myself on the CCTV trying to steal something. Right? Stealing, following people and stalking, and being disliked makes sense. There was some thief who looked exactly like me, even had similar hairstyle, which was in fashion around as of now. I already know of two guys who look identically like me. Account 10. All right. So my pre-school teacher, who also ended up somehow changing jobs and becoming my 11th grade English teacher, had a super interesting life. Her mother had some super famous book. Her father worked high up in the government. But enough about her family. First, let me describe her to you. She had dark hair and blue eyes. You'll see why this matters in a minute. She told this story every single year to the new students in her class. When she was younger, she was driving through Arizona on a two-way road, while her boyfriend at the time was following behind her on his motorcycle. For those who don't live in Arizona, certain stretches of it can be quite isolated and deserted. She said that they were on a long drive. It's been about six years since I was in her class, so details are fuzzy. But basically, her and her boyfriend both knew the destination where they were heading by memory and eventually got separated by a few miles. A man who was behind her in a Volkswagen Beetle kept pulling up beside her into the other lane. No one was coming. 
and motioning at her to pull over, she somewhat ignored him the first few times, but he kept doing it and began getting more frantic each time. She said that she believed that he spotted something wrong with her car, so she saw a parking lot off the road for a deserted gas station and pulled over. Once pulled over, she said that she instantly got an eerie feeling. The man was suspicious and kept telling her that he saw something wrong with her headlight and insisted she get out of the car so he could show her what he meant. Her boyfriend, who was a few miles behind her, eventually caught up and spotted her car at the sketchy gas station. Right as she was out of the car, her boyfriend began to pull in. As he did that, this man got into his car and sped off like his life depended on it. They later were able to identify that the man was Ted Bundy. She said she cannot imagine what would have happened to her if her boyfriend had been even another three miles behind her on the road. Account 11. A family friend was cleaning her bus before the bus run. She had two small kids who were strapped into car seats in the bus. She swept the floor and was standing outside the bus leaning in, using a dustpan and brush to collect the dirt she had swept up. The auto doors on the bus kicked in and closed on her neck. She suffocated while her two young children looked on, unable to do anything because they couldn't undo their car seat buckles. Account 12. Christ all effing mighty. I had a boyfriend studying for licensure in scuba diving once. He used to tell me some of what he was learning, including information about rising safely and the rates at which you have to ascend and how to rescue someone. I had to make him stop telling me. I couldn't listen to anymore. The details of what happens to a person's blood if they rise too quickly stick with me to this day. I cannot imagine what those divers went through. Account 13. Well, this one was quite dreadful for me, at least. Whilst I was working back in 2006, I was working inside of a multi-story car park. I came down in the lift from the top floor where I was working at the time. As I got out the lift, there was a woman in her late 40s, I would say, with graying hair and a maroon handbag. We brushed shoulders as I got out the lift. I apologized. She gave me a very blank look. I walked out to go get some food, not thinking at the time much more than that. Although, when I think about it, the lady appeared to look quite sad, I returned with my noodles around 20 to 30 minutes later. At this point, I got back and police were everywhere. The lady had jumped from the top floor. I knew it was her from the handbag laying on the floor, gosh. If I had stopped and spoke to her or left for lunch a little later, I may have been able to stop her jumping. Account 14. The people that bought my childhood home were murdered. The man that killed then snuck in and out of the house for a week. He would often slip into the house and be there for hours. He would hide in places that I knew. I knew them. Because as a kid, those were the best spots to hide for hide and seek. My favorite hiding spots were a killer's hiding spots. Account 15. A colleague of my dad's went on holiday to a small cottage in Wales in the middle of nowhere in the UK as wintertime. With his wife, they were found by the owner of the house after the week they rented it for was up, completely insane, clawing at their skin and the whole place was a wreck. The full story was never found out. But the guy and his wife both were rambling about a red knife that followed them wherever they went that they found in the bed of the cottage. They are both still alive and as far as I'm aware, under psychiatric care, edit, a couple people are saying it could be carbon monoxide poisoning resulting in brain damage, thus hallucinations and insanity. This was also suspected by police and investigators. The house had a carbon monoxide alarm and it wasn't tripped. No red knife was ever found.